We are in the summer session, Professor. Now that the chess pieces have all settled, we want you to grade our top overachievers. The Dean's List of Worthy oh. NBA oh. Teams of the NBA Offseason. Who do you have first? Uh, I think we got to start with the LA Clippers at this point. Yeah. You know, when we Let's last did this, it was before the, the announcement of Kawhi Leonard and the Paul George trade. Sure. We don't have trades on here. But, <laughs> you know, obviously they get an A for free agency, but A for trades as well. Mm -hmm. It took a lot to get Paul George, but that's kind of the price to get both him and And Kawhi A for Leonard. trading five first round picks, Kevin Pell? <laughs> you know, everything is situational, but then also getting one of those picks to take on Maurice Harkless's contract. Yes. yes. That was a, a stealth great move for the Clippers. But you didn't like them moving up in the draft and getting that first round pick. Yeah, it was like kind of man. That C is maybe a little harsh. Maybe it is. Yeah, I was just going to say, and oh, by the way, if you don't get an A plus, for, if the Clippers don't get an A plus for free agents, then who does? Well, well you, you know, I don't believe in A pluses because an A is already a straight 4.0. So. <laughs> um. 4.3, oh. sir. That's oh. what the, I hate that. You know, that no that's one gets, no one gets an easy ride in Professor Pelton's class. No, there's no freebies <laughs> in the NBA. Come on now. Do you think the Clippers could have done anything more or differently? I mean, I, like, I guess they didn't have to give up six picks. But <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, the, the funny thing is when you talk to the Clippers uh, people, what they say is the picks, you know, whatever, take them. Shea Gilgis Alexander, that's the part that yeah. really hurt their feelings. Because yeah. yeah. they really think he has a, a chance to be special. Yeah. So the thing about when you add players, especially if you do it through uh, free agent, through us cap space, your team ten ten has a tendency to be sort of, you have no depth. Like the, what's, what's happened with the Lakers, sure. quite frankly, and other teams as, as well. This team, because of good management and because of good contracts that they signed beforehand, has great depth. So while their future assets are a little bit impeded because of what they gave up, what they have now on their two deep roster is fantastic. That is very, very rare to see a team be deep and stacked with new with new stars. And so that's why I agree with that. April. Well, great. Kawhi's giving them two years to show what they got, and then it's reevaluation time again. So we might be calling you back on that one as well. <laughs> Kevin, who is your second overachiever of the NBA summer? Well, then we got to go with the Brooklyn Nets, who are mm -hmm. the team that I originally gave the A to when right. we talked about right. this at that point. I mean, you get Kevin Durant, you get Kyrie Irving. Uh, as I talked about then, I think the real key, though, is kind of this cap maneuvering that they did to get both those guys, bring in DeAndre Jordan as their buddy to help seal the deal with the two of them. You know, they, they made a lot of uh, a complex sign and trade involving D'Angelo Russell, allowed them to do that. There were some unlikely incentives in some of those contracts. So, you know, they did some expert level cap work. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I one, one of our stories, I'm going to mix up whether it was your story or Ramona's story or Woj's story, was talking about how Kevin Durant was the one who really stepped in and said, yeah. right? Was that? Yeah, he, Durant said, if you're going to trade me, you're not just trading me for DeAndre Russell, you're going to send a first-round pick. So they got a first-round pick in that deal as well. Um, I don't I love the I love that they did cap maneuvering to make room. I just didn't love that they gave DeAndre Jordan a four-year guaranteed contract. But if that's the charge for getting Kyrie and Durant, you do it 10 times out of 10. Um, I'm a little bit worried about the Durant injury, and I'm a little bit worried about Kyrie's sort of interesting history as a ah. leader. So I am agreeing with A- minus as well here. I, if Durant is the player that we all think and hope he can be after that Achilles recovery, this is going to be a championship-level team, and how can you not? A couple of things. One, DeAndre Jordan, I think we all look at it like that's the cost of doing business, but also he has a chance to be a steadying influence for two guys who are very up and down with their emotions. So I think he's actually going to earn his money. It may not be on the court. It may be in the locker room. The other thing is I wonder – how much conversation we're going to have about closing that loophole, about the unlikely bonuses. Because they basically right. created with 10 extra million dollars out of thin air by just saying things that they didn't do last year that, of course, we expect them to be able to do. Well, the NBA did crack down on that a little bit because they wanted to have many more unlikely incentives in those two contracts, but they ruled that some of them would be likely once they treated right. Durant as healthy for the 2020-21 season. Right. So if, if you were following along with this, basically they couldn't fit the salaries they expected to under the cap, so they turned some of that salary money into bonuses, but they're bonuses for being like, what, 0.3 yeah, more in yeah. rebounds than they had been the year before yeah. or something like being that. Being alive, basically. <laughs> Having a pulse. <laughs> you get a bonus. We will see. You got Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For highlights and analysis, check out the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, check out ESPN+.